Billy Mays here. Are you tired of your keyboard being boring and cringe? Well, do I have the hobby for you that'll drain your wallet faster than your crazy ass? This is the Apex Pro. It's good with omnipoint linear switches that allow for differing actuation, but it could be better. For one, the sound profile is pingy, and it's rather difficult to mod. Weighing in at 2.14 pounds, it's not only good for getting those sick shots for the Lord, you can bludgeon your opponents to death in real life. That was for the lord, you filthy heathen. When someone says keyboard, you think of this. No, not that. This. This is what most schools and offices use. It's called a full-size membrane keyboard. It's cringe. Yay! Most of you filthy casuals watching this garbage only know this. Now I'm gonna offer you a choice. Either take the blue pill and stay in Wonderland with your full-size boards, or take the red pill and see how far this rabbit hole goes. This is a 65% keyboard. It has 68 keys and has that special something something. It's mechanical, meaning your grandma's rubber dome keyboard ain't got shit on this. These are keyboard switches, and each of them are the best of the best in their class. These are what make a mechanical keyboard a mechanical board. There's three types of switches. There's S-tier linear, decent tactile, and we don't talk about clicky switches. I've been informed by the rat that I have five minutes left. Each style of switch has thousands of variants and thousands of weights and materials to be made out of, all determined by the manufacturer and whether or not they have any maidens. The main parts of the switch are the pins, the plate, the spring, the top and bottom housing, and the stem. The only parts that really matter are the stems and the springs. The stem determines the tile of the switch and how smooth it'll be stuck, while the spring determines how much force it takes to push down the switch. There can be millions of combinations of switch parts to create new and custom switches called Frankenstein switches, the most famous being Holy Pandas, or the better and cheaper option, Glorious Pandas. For this video, like the opioid epidemic, we're just going to ignore it. The stem is arguably the most important part of the switch. This is what gives the switch its style and how smooth and expensive the switch is going to be. A stem made out of palm is going to be extremely smooth stock while also being extremely expensive. Looking at you, Gateron Ink Flax, double cheeked up on a Thursday with your $1.20 a switch. Next is the spring. This determines how heavy the switch feels. A lighter spring means it's easier to push down, much like a fat kid on a seesaw. A heavier spring is harder to push down, making for more force required to push the key down. Spring weight is all personal preference, so there is no right weight. If you choose anything less than a 55 gram spring, you're on my list. The rest is all pretty standard between switches, pins, plate, and the housing. The housing holds everything together, the plate is what makes contact with the pins to actually make the switch work, and the pins connect to the PCB. What's the PCB you ask? Well, that's the printed circuit board. It's what makes the keyboard do keyboard stuff. This isn't too important, but it's necessary for a keyboard as it's what connects the switches together and then connects to the computer and actually makes it work with those fancy gamer lights. Where the fun begins. You thought switches were difficult? Pause this video and go sit in a corner so you can think about your stupidity. Okay, now that you're shamed and back, let's talk about the case. More specifically, the parts of the bloody thing. We got the case. We got the plate. We got the foam. And we got the tape. Wait, why tape? Ah, for the tape mod, of course. What's the tape mod, you ask? Well, the tape mod is putting painter's tape on the back of the PCB, like this. This reduces the space between the case and the PCB, allowing for less sound to reverberate through the case and giving a, a more... Uh, 
how do you say Thucky sound? Most people like this sound, and by most people, I mean me. So that's what we're going for. While case and plate material do make a difference in sound profile, we're going to be using an all PBT plastic case because that's all I have and I'm poor and PBT plastic is the best. Since we're using a plastic case, we really don't have to worry about case echo or spring ping, two things that plague metal cases and most mainstream keyboards. We're also going to be using a steel backplate to make the board feel more rigid. This is a mid-profile case, so there's more room for the tape and the foam mod. This is also a customer's keyboard, so we really want it to sound and feel the absolute best. Now that we have the PCB foamed and taped, we're going to assemble the board where we screw in the screws. I know, it's shocking. We're just going to use a little bit of magic to get all this done. Now that I used 0.2% of my power to finish screwing in the screws, we move on to the stabilizers, or stabs. Now to quote Dr. Harold Shipman, stabs can make or break the board. For those of you following at home, you're gonna need lube. Not that lube, put that away, Jesus Christmas Christ, this is a family friendly video. What you want is some Crytox 205G, the good stuff other keyboard builders No, oh I see what you mean, now you can bring back the other lube. But I'm poor, and I can't afford fancy ass Crytox 205G. So we use the oh boy, nobody loves me. dielectric grease. It accomplishes the same goal on the stabs, but this stuff is thicker than Ben Shapiro's sister. So don't be putting it in your switches or anywhere else. Get the stab bar end nice and coated and slide it back into the stab housing nice and easy. Now I'm going to use another 0.2% of my power and finish these before I get bonked back to horny jam. When installing switches, you want to start with the stabilizer switches which are the ones that are in between each of the stabilizers. This is the enter key, the shift key, the other enter key, the other shift key, and the backspace key. This allows you to find any rattle in the stabilizers and to make sure your board is still flat. It's just like building Legos. You find the two pins on the bottom of the switch that are copper, those are the connectors, as we spoke about earlier, and then the two on the sides are the stabilizing pins. Those make sure the switch goes in straight and stays straight. Much like the Catholic Church. Now that we got all the switches installed, all that's left to do is add the keycaps. And with the keycaps installed, you're all done. All you gotta do is plug it in, make sure it works, and bada bing bada boom, you got yourself your new keyboard. But Gatsby, how does it sound? Shit yourself! Sound tests are notorious for being unreliable and can possibly be skewed. Tape material, distance to mic, direction of mic, type of mic, how hard somebody types all play a role in the sound profile. Most times, the sound profile won't change much if one copies a build completely, but oftentimes, users won't even notice a critical difference between builds or setups, such as if one is typing on a wooden or glass table, or if the person doing the sound test has a desk mat under the board, or even how thick it is. All these factor into the sound profile, but here's a sound test on a wooden desk with a Note 20 Ultra's mic facing towards the table about 8 inches away. Happy?